Hello, Kidney Warriors. James here from Dad Vice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is another episode of Dad Vice TV Live. And if you are new, go ahead and say new in the comments. That way we can all get to meet you. We have a great and very supportive and super helpful community here of Kidney Warriors, all with the goal of improving our quality of life and trying to kick kidney disease to the curb. Now, if you are new, let me quickly tell you about myself and who I am. My name is James, I have kidney disease. I was diagnosed just over two years ago when I spent a week in the ICU. And the doctors told me, James, you need dialysis and a transplant. Well, it's been two years, I never went on dialysis. I never went on a transplant, instead, I worked with my healthcare team, which included the most important person, a renal dietitian, and I changed my diet. I changed my lifestyle. I said goodbye to Wendy's. I said goodbye to Burger King. I kissed pizza goodbye, and I started eating more plant-based, understanding, learning about nutrition, exercising more, and doing things that were good for my body. Now, as I did that, my kidney function, my labs started to improve and I got past kidney failure. I got up to stage four, I kept going. I got into stage three and more importantly, I got rid of every symptom and I had them all from the severe anemia, that metallic taste, the headache, unable to sleep at night. Oh my goodness, everything you can mention, I suffered from, no more. There's no magic pills. No magic herbs, nothing like that. It's just simple diet and lifestyle changes and a bit of luck, which is one of the things we can't control. But the most important part of that is what I eat, changing that. Now, when I go out to eat or when I make dinner, I can practically eat what I want because I understand nutrition. I make better choices and I control my portion sizes. And that has been the key to managing my kidney disease and my symptoms. But all of that started with knowledge, learning from people who really knew what they were talking about, people like our guest today, back again like she is every single week. Let's welcome our local renal dietitian from the internet, Jen Hernandez. Hey, Jen, how you doing? Nice talking with you and your episode where we get to talk about kidney nutrition. Yeah. Now for those that are new, can you tell them a little bit about what a renal dietitian is? Yeah. So if you have not been following us, if you don't know what I do, I am a renal dietitian. I am board certified in renal nutrition. I went through my undergrad learning nutrition. I went through my internship, which is unpaid by the way. And I spent my time there learning about the fundamentals of being a dietitian. Once I finished my internship, I was able to sit for the national exam to become a registered dietitian. So I took the exam, passed and became a registered dietitian. As I built into my career as a dietitian, I became interested in renal nutrition. I was honestly scared of renal nutrition when I first got into it because I was introduced to dialysis and I understood the impact of nutrition with dialysis care, but it is a very intensive diet. There's a lot behind it, but I wanted the challenge. I wanted to be able to learn it and teach it. So I worked in the dialysis centers. After doing that for several years, as well as working with the National Kidney Foundation, I decided to sit for another exam for dietitians to do the next level. And I became board certified in renal nutrition. That is what I do now with my virtual private practice, working with clients privately, and also hosting my online course, Plant Powered Kidneys. And that is what I get to do. And I'm just so honored to be able to do that for my career. Very, very honored, very blessed. And in case you didn't notice, I had a pretty big change with my uh, work home, and that is my website. It was jenhernandezrd.com, but it is officially 
plantpoweredkidneys.com. So which is, is the website. same name as your Facebook group, making it easy yes. to find both of them. Yes, it all comes full circle. <laughs> it just took me a little while because I had to do it. I mean, I didn't have to do it all myself, but I did it all myself. I am a I am a DI, uh, or DIYer when it comes to a lot of my business stuff. I like to get my hands dirty and learn the back end. So um, I did finally get that done. It's plantpoweredkidneys.com. That's where you can reach me. You can look at the blog and resources I have. You can learn more about the course that I do provide. It is closed right now, but just to give you a hint, enrollment will be coming up in 2021. So uh, it's been wonderful. Our students have been finishing. They're actually done with the six week course now. And I've been getting great feedback, great results from people talking about how much they've learned in the course. And it is absolutely wonderful to go through and hear people's success stories that they've been posting for me to take a look at. Awesome. Now let me bring us both up here on the screen at once and everybody, Make sure you follow Jen's Facebook group, plantpoweredkidneys.com is her, her uh, website. It's also the same name, Plant Powered Kidneys, as a Facebook group. There's so much great information, great conversation, very positive and very supportive, which is what we need to kick kidney disease to the curb. Now, tonight, we are talking about something that I know nothing about. So I, like everyone else, am going to be learning all about this, and that is vitamin A. So what can you tell us about vitamin A that we need to know? So the reason I wanted to talk about this is that exact reason, James. This is not talked about in the kidney world, in the renal community, as much as it should for several reasons. I actually, I had a client last night and she didn't even know this was going to be the topic. This totally came up by chance, but she was like, Hey, can you tell me some about vitamin A? Like what, what's going on with that? And it told, I told her, I was like, well, if you tune in, so I don't know if she's able to tune in tonight, but I said, if you tune in to Dadwise, I'm going to really dive into it. So vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin. You may have heard of it as retinol or retinal or even retinoic acid. These are the types of pre, uh, pro-formed vitamin A. I'm getting my two mixed up. The other type is a precursor to vitamin A, and that's beta carotene. So you may have heard about beta carotene yep. in our food and our diet. That, that one's a little bit more familiar. Uh, we think about that. What, what comes to mind when you think of beta carotene, James? Carrots. Yeah. Yeah, High that's beta really carotene. It. Yep. So it's that <laughs> orange color that is the beta carotene, really. Uh, so with vitamin A as a fat soluble vitamin, we say it's fat soluble because it needs fat in our food to be digested and absorbed into the body. So I, I wondered what fat soluble means. I've always seen yes. water soluble. Yeah. But I actually so probably never soluble. noticed if it said fat soluble or soluble. Yeah. Uh, that's a tongue twister for me. <laughs> so yeah, fat soluble, it has to do with the foods that you're eating with it. So when you're eating foods that have vitamin A, if you're eating some kind of fat source with it, a little bit of olive oil in your dressing, a little bit of avocado, some nuts, some seeds, that fat from your food is what's helping your body absorb that vitamin A. So uh, that makes a fat soluble vitamin. So if I okay. just eat carrots, say I'm healthy, no kidney issues, and I'm chowing down on carrots, which I used to love when I was a kid, I'm not really absorbing a lot of that vitamin A because I'm not getting fat. No, not, not as significantly as, uh, as if you're getting fat with the food. The fat is really what helps it get absorbed uh -huh. into the gut. Yes. So with that, once it gets absorbed, the vitamin A, uh, depending if it's beta carotene, it gets converted into retinol. Uh, so then it gets stored in the liver. The liver is our fat soluble or our vitamin A storage center. That is where it gets housed. That is where our body keeps it for needs in the future. So that is the quick breakdown of what vitamin A is and basically how we get it into our system. Now, people ask me, well, okay, is this something that I need to be focusing on in my diet? Is this something I need to be paying attention to? And what really happens is 
you don't need to be paying attention to it as much as you think. And that has to do with the fact that it is a fat soluble vitamin. So our body has the stores there. It's not something that we need to be hyper focused on as compared to the water soluble vitamins that get released if we have too much. So those energy drinks, any of the supplements that are super high in B vitamins, Oh yeah. If you're, if you have enough stores, I know when I've had enough B vitamin. (laughs) Yeah. You can see it, right? (laughs) Exactly. You can see it. Yeah. Yeah. So with vitamin A, uh, it basically is managed internally with the body. So it's not something that you need to be really, really focused on so long as you're eating a variety of those kinds of foods. So vitamin A, comes from those orange, green, even dark greens uh, as beta carotene in plants, but it also is there in animal products. So think again, vitamin A, where is it stored? In the fat. In the liver. Oh, in the liver. It's absorbed. Yeah, it's absorbed via fat. It's stored in the liver. Uh So other animals like us have livers. So other animals are going to be a source of vitamin A. So we're talking meat, poultry, fish, even dairy, eggs, meat products have that retinol. Plant products have the beta carotene. Either way, it's vitamin A, and there's definitely enough there in our diets. So it's not something that the United States, other developed countries have a vitamin A deficiency concern. So. Don't worry right off the bat thinking that you're not getting enough vitamin A because chances are you are not, or you are getting enough vitamin A. And if you're worried about if you're getting enough vitamin A, a simple test really is how is your night vision? It's going to take time to, and I'm not saying like, you know, you put those green, uh, those special ops green goggles on and you right. can see everything so crystal clear. It's more so of even being able to see shadows or let's say, when you're getting ready for bed at night and you turn off the lights. At first, it's really, really dark, but then your eyes adjust, your a- chicken liver's choice has got it. You're yeah. able to, <laughs> eventually you're able to see at least silhouettes, little linings of things for the most part, unless you have like blackout curtains yep. and everything is literally closed up tight, but you will be able to see some outlines of things. So vitamin A is often thought of as the, um, the eye vitamin, Right. So I don't know if anyone else out there has heard of maybe when you grew up, your parents would say, eat your carrots so you can see in the dark. Yes. I mean, (laughs) always heard, eat your carrots so you don't need glasses. Age caught up with me. There wasn't enough carrots to undo it or prevent it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It is, uh, it is very closely related to our eyesight. So, you know, for those of us that are blessed or cursed, however you want to look at at it with, uh, some vision challenges it's not the vitamin a that we're lacking it's that's a different thing but vitamin a is really important in our eye health it's also important as an antioxidant important for our immune function it does help with healthy skin healthy nails healthy bones that's what i was thinking you know when you mentioned retinol it is that the same thing that they put in the creams that i spend so much money on trying to remove the years <laughs> Yes. So retinol is the vitamin A. So a lot of these uh, dermal or or serum skin kind of things are vitamin based. If you think there's vitamin E serums, there's vitamin C serums, there's vitamin A, there's tons of these serums that are out or, or any product really that's out that is meant to help with the health of our skin. So vitamin A is one of those things that is meant to help with the health of our skin, our hair, our hair our nails, our bones, and our bones is really part of that kidney connection because our kidneys also have to do with taking care of our bone health. Yes. Very important part of taking care of our bone health. Yeah. So with vitamin A, as I mentioned, we don't need to worry so much about getting enough. We're getting enough in our diets in America, because some of the top sources are things that we don't shy away from, like sweet potatoes and mangoes and spinach and kale and 
every like red orange kind of color thing you can think of it's going to have that beta carotene in it and i really love to emphasize the plant side the beta carotene mm -hmm. because you know plant powered kidneys that's what i'm promoting yes you can get it from animal products absolutely no problem what i'm saying is you can get it from plant products too it is not something that is required for you to have animal foods yeah, and Joyce is making kind of a funny joke, which I like here. Maybe we should rub liver on our faces, you know, to help de-age us instead of buying those expensive creams that come in the teeniest, tiniest little bottles. <laughs> I mean, we're already socially distancing. So if you have a funky smell with your face, yeah. what, what's the problem, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're okay. I'm going to notice. <laughs> now, so, do we... Uh, another so, thing. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, uh, no, no, you go. so I know, you know, I looked at pro renal plus D the multivitamin that I take and there's no vitamin A in there. And you've kind of addressed that because we're getting enough from the food that we naturally eat. Um, but could we get too much of it? If we eat too much carrots or something like that, a whole bunch of, and I don't know how many carrots it would take. Uh, but can yeah. we get too much by eating too many of these foods that are high in it or that have it? In general, the symptom that you'll get is a nice orange glow. You'll get that. Um, yeah, you'll get that. You'll get that orange glow to you for your skin. If you have a lot of beta carotene in your diet, uh, I will say that there is such a thing as vitamin toxicity. Uh, there is such a thing. Uh, I'm trying to remember the term off the top of my head right now. Hypervitaminosa, something like that. Um, but there is a term for too much vitamin A in your body. And that's because it's a fat soluble vitamin. Again, vitamin A is stored in our bodies, unlike the water soluble vitamins that are not. So with the fat soluble vitamins, you want to be careful. I mean, it's, it's, having too much is not a common issue either. There's a pretty wide range. Um, I have the, the numbers. Okay, so the recommended amount for vitamin A for adult men is 900 micrograms of retinal activity equivalents, RAE, or 700 micrograms of RAE for women per day. So that is a percent of what is shown on food labels. If you see the vitamin A there, that is just a percent of what is actually listed. The tolerable upper, upper level intake is 3,000 micrograms. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. So it's really, it's much higher from the recommended amount. So there's a really good gratuity or gap there in that amount. Uh, it's again, the too much vitamin A, not enough vitamin A, not super common in the United States. Um, but for most people, if they get a lot of vitamin A, the beta carotene, they get that orangish kind of tint to their skin from that beta carotene. So that's about it. But the trouble that can come up is supplements. And that's something that people ask about is, do I need to supplement with vitamin A? Like you mentioned, you looked at your renal vitamin. Yep. There's no vitamin A there. So is it missing? Do we need to put that in? What's going on there? So the reason that your renal vitamin A or your renal vitamin does not have vitamin A is because for kidney disease, that extra vitamin is not encouraged. For people on dialysis, the vitamin A does not get dialyzed out like other vitamins. So we don't worry about those losses like we do other vitamins. So it is not encouraged for people to have a vitamin A supplement if they have kidney disease. Now, there has been some studies with vitamin A supplements to see what goes on, what happens. What they did find in one study was that people who took a vitamin A supplement had high calcium levels and high calcium levels is damaging to the bones. It doesn't sound like it would be because you think, oh, more calcium, it must be my bones are healthier, but it can actually lead to higher risk of bone fractures. And one study did find that people who took a vitamin A supplement had a higher risk of hip fractures. So they had to, that, that's one of the things they found. And we were talking about what vitamin A does. Part mm -hmm. of vitamin A's job is bone health. So if it's trying to manage the pieces of um, the, basically the cells, 
excuse me, of the bone, if you have too much of it, it makes sense that that might throw something off when it comes to your bone health. So thinking just about what it does. Okay. Yeah. Maybe too much of a good thing exists in this case. And, and if I, I'm, rem if I'm remembering, remembering correctly, calcium and phosphorus are almost like magnets and they, if, if your calcium goes up, your phosphorus is going to get, go up and that can cause joint pain where it starts kind of collecting in your joints. And that's definitely not a good thing. Right. Yeah, that is not a good thing at all with the, uh, with the vitamin a related to this, it, it basically, I, I don't think they have studied this pathway enough. Mm -hmm. So if you guys know nutrition, science is very much a baby science. And now we're getting into a, a subcategory of nutrition science where we're talking about kidney disease. And most often any nutrition studies related to kidney disease are going to be looked at end stage kidney disease, people on dialysis, because you have a captive audience for lack of yep. a better word. <laughs> you have people there and you're checking their labs all the time. You're checking their vitals all the time. You can follow up with them consistently. They're there, they're there and you can track things that are going on. CKD, chronic, earlier chronic kidney disease nutrition studies are young, still up and coming. So looking in the earlier side, it's harder to find more information. And it's probably hard to also find enough people that are stage one, stage two, or even early stage three, since most of us kind of learn about our kidney issues so late when symptoms start appearing. Exactly. It's a really hard thing to say, okay, now we're going to find this group of people who may or may not know that their kidneys are damaged and then try to figure out this one specific thing when they're doing their own thing, living their own lives, going to work, having a home environment, all these different variables that could also play a role on kidney health. As you guys know, it's not so cut and dry. It's not so simple. There's a lot of things involved. So it it is something that definitely requires more studying and testing but what we know right now is that vitamin a supplements are contraindicated meaning they are not approved for people with kidney disease that's why even when i talk with my own clients when we talk about a multivitamin we talk about just a b complex not a full multivitamin because that full multivitamin is going to likely have the vitamin a that we don't want them to be taking yeah, and when I first was diagnosed, there were certain vitamins that my doctor said, hey, you need more, like the B vitamins. You need a B complex because of anemia to help with that. And I needed a little bit of iron and a few other things. And I wanted to just run down to Walgreens and grab a, a bottle of Centrum. And he's like, no, 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 no. I want you to get just what you need, these individual ones. He wasn't aware of ProRenal Plus D, which is pretty much all the kidney-friendly ones. Uh, but he wanted me not to go grab a multivitamin off the shelf and instead just focus on the ones I needed because some of them can build up and they're not good for us with kidney disease. Yeah, and, and that's why it's so important that, again, for anybody out there, you don't just want to just go off and grab whatever thinking that that's something you want to take. You always want to check with your own healthcare team to make sure you are taking the right things that you should be taking because the last thing you want to do is pay money for something that's going to hurt your kidneys or hurt your health. Last exactly. thing you want to do. All right. So um, another question that people ask me about is vitamin A in kidney stones. So again, I mean, is there any connection there? Is Does vitamin A cause kidney stones? Just hearing kidney stones makes me want to drink a little more water. So the thing with vitamin A and kidney stones, again, this is getting super hyper-focused on these very specific situations. There is not a ton of research out there, but there was a study done that found people who had calcium stones, again, thinking about vitamin A and the bones and the calcium, people who had calcium stones seem to have a higher diet with vitamin A. And it was just this correlation they found people who had uric acid stones didn't seem to have that same connection of as much vitamin a so it's not necessarily something that is 
in fact proven linked but it is something to be aware of and kind of keep on the forefront of your mind if you have kidney stones again not to take a supplement because the supplement part is not the approved way to go when it comes to vitamin a including sources of vitamin a in your diet and of course i'm preferential preferential to plant-based sources but including those sources in your diet can be a, a helpful nutrient to have just in your food not anything else added yeah and i like that way better i've i've got enough pills just with my blood pressure medicine and the few other things i take i'm i've got a point where i look for can i get that from food what can i eat to address that and then if i'm not getting enough then i'll work with my doctors or my healthcare team to look at adding a supplement and then we always the few times they have had me add a supplement we got labs added it then got labs later at a certain point to make sure i'm getting the right amount and not too much because a lot of us may think oh this vitamin is good for us. Let's get lots of it. Too much. It can be harmful. Put stress on your kidneys, cause problems, cause other issues. We've got kidney disease. We don't need any other issues. So be careful not to self-prescribe or try to take extra stuff because James is taking it or, or Larry's taking it or Susan's taking it and they have kidney disease. Doesn't work that way. So speaking of testing the labs, there are ways that you can get your vitamin A levels checked. It's not the most common thing to be checked because again, vitamin A deficiency is not something that's commonly seen. But if you want to get your levels checked, you can get the retinol tested, the serum retinol to see how much you have in your body. You can also get the retinol binding protein, which is part of the uh, essentially the absorption of the retinol, the vitamin A that goes into the body, just to make sure basically you're checking to see, um, do I have enough Uber drivers to get me from point A to point B? Do we have enough people that are going to get us from here to there? So that is another way to test it. But again, I mean, you can ask your doctor to check it if you want. It's not going to be the most common thing. Uh, some of the symptoms I'll add about having too little uh, vitamin A are nausea, vomiting, bone thinness, which is something that you get further testing for. Um, I want to say hair loss. I have a few of them. Oh, mm. yeah, I have a few of them listed out here, but it's, it's, it can be confusing with symptoms of too much vitamin A, which include nausea, vomiting, <laughs> and blurry vision is another one. If you have uh, this acute onset of vision. None problems. of those are good. I don't want any of those. No. No, but that's when we're talking about like a lot of vitamin A, like 10,000 micrograms per day. So a ton of vitamin A. And then if we're looking directly again at vitamin A with kidneys, I do just want to reiterate that the primary focus is going to be for people on dialysis, that it's not going to be dialyzed out. So you'll have a higher collection there, you might get high calcium levels. So when you're checking your labs with your dietitian, take a look at your calcium and see what your calcium level is at, and then check your supplements. Because sometimes we take supplements and we don't even bother looking at the back. We just, like you said, James, we just take it. It must be good for us. So we yep. run with it. So it looks good. It's got somebody time. that's in shape and healthy on the, on the front of it. It looks fantastic, but no, we a always marketing have to read those labels yes. and always always check with your healthcare team should you be taking this um cheryl just asked a question should she be on a b12 or a b complex that's something your doctor or your healthcare team can let you know not everyone needs those extra b vitamins um for me when i was anemic my doctor had me take those, a little bit of iron, a little bit of vitamin C, a very little amount of vitamin C with the bees to help it absorb. And then once I got past that, he's like, stop those. You, you don't need them anymore. You're okay. And a um, huge difference when I stopped the bees because you can see the bees when you pee. <laughs> it's like Sesame Street there with the alphabet. <laughs> 
true. But yeah, you definitely, that is one way to see it right away. Uh, so I also wanted to cover a few of the sources that are high in vitamin A, just so you know where to get them from. And I'm sure as I go through, I'm going to read through my list because I do not have this memorized. But uh, when I go through this, I bet a lot of you are going to be like, oh yeah, I eat that, I eat that, I eat that. And remember, it's a fat soluble vitamin. So it's not like you have to have this stuff all the time. You get it, it is high in vitamin A, your vitamin A gets stored, you're good to go. So what should I go over first, fruits or vegetables? Well, are those portobello mushrooms on there? Oh my gosh, who was it? Joyce. Thank there you, Joyce. Is, I, so Joyce. We were messaging, we were messaging and we were talking about mushrooms. And I was like, can you please bring it up to James? Because if I do it, I'm just nagging and I I have not cooked addition. them yet. I still have them. We are cooking them for lunch tomorrow. I have tomorrow off. And then of course Thanksgiving is Thursday here in the United States. I have that off and I have Friday off. I am cooking all new stuff for the next three days because we're, we're staying home. We're, we're, we're being safe and it's just me and my wife, my two little kids, we don't eat that much. So we're not making a turkey or anything like that. And I have all sorts of veggies that I bought or healthy stuff, stuff that grows, stuff that's natural. And I'm going to just explore. And if I don't like it, I'm home. I can give it to the dogs and make something else. <laughs> well, I really, really hope you like them. You def you don't want them in the fridge for too long. Thank you, Joyce. I appreciate that. You don't want them for in there for too long because then the texture can kind of get sad. And it's you know it's like greens or other other vegetables, other fruits that you know after a while it's just oh they're. Hmm. But yeah, Joyce is right. They are absolutely amazing. They are so I don't know sponges. what too long is for them. They've been in there like a week. I think you'll be good cooking them in the next day or so. Um, but depending on how you like them, if you're like, you know, if, if you're like, oh, I could see, I could see enjoying these, then I would say try it again, but try them a little more fresh to see what that difference is like. Sounds good. Well, so the next time we meet next Tuesday, I will. Joyce, you hear me? I will have an update on what I think of my cooking them and eating them. And if I don't like them, I'm going to blame my cooking. Okay. Well, I'm going to hold you accountable to that. And I'm sure everybody watching will also hold you accountable. Um, and I'm, this is very much tangential, but if you want to drop in the comments and say if you're pro mushroom or not so much pro mushroom, I would be curious to see how overall what people think about them. So that's a good but it looks one. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm just curious to hear what what the audience is thinking about mushrooms. I am so pro. I am I am Joyce pro. I'm Joyce level pro. So and Joyce that, said she's going to send me her recipe. James at dadvicetv.com. That's my email. I'm looking for it, Joyce. I will try all different recipes because I am I I am an expert at stir fry. The last two years, I need to expand. Well, you could absolutely just add the mushrooms into your stir fry. I would say marinate them before you add them. That's all. Very good. So what foods do we have? Let's start with the... Wait, what were the options? <laughs> <laughs> the options are fruits and vegetables. Let's start with fruits. Okay. So for fruits, we have mango. We also have cantaloupe. So I want you to be thinking about these as I'm reading them, okay? It's the color. Grape yeah. Grapefruit. Boom. Watermelon. Papaya. Apricots. Tangerines nectarines, guava, and passion fruit. Oh, very good. Those are, yeah, those are all good sources of vitamin A in fruits. So again, if you pulled out that image, thinking a lot of those orange red colors, beta carotene, that's where that's coming from. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested about, I, I'm very distracted by this poll that's going on now. That we are seeing <laughs> way more pro mushroom than okay. pass on the mushrooms. Phew. I was kind of worried everyone was going to be like, no. 
Okay, good. And That's Linda good. here even threw in some some little emojis. That's awesome. Oh, that's so good. Okay, I'm glad to hear these kidney warriors are on board. With but fashion. it's not if all pro. Not, Boop. I know. If you're not, I'm sorry. On behalf of mushrooms everywhere, we did ah. we we didn't mean to hurt you, but um, you can't win them all, and, I guess. And Cheryl's saying I might have had them in my fridge a little too long. Yeah. So they'll get what will happen. They're because they're like sponges. They are not moisture heavy like think of like a watermelon or a cucumber, but they do kind of shrink a little bit and you can see mold on them after some time. Uh, the best way to store them is in a paper bag. So when you keep them in the fridge, put them in a paper bag and that helps keep the moisture away from them. And oh. when you clean them, clean them with a damp paper towel, just wipe them down with a paper towel instead of rinsing them under water because the paper towel one acts like a scrubber to pull things off of the top of the mushroom and then two prevents that extra water from getting absorbed so you still let the mushroom soak up whatever marinade you put into it very good we turn this into a mushroom recipe we, course we we'll probably have to include that in the notes like by the way if you're interested about mushrooms and talking about mushrooms you can watch this episode too well, you know what's going to be amazing is I have a feeling that I am going to to love them and be like, I passed on these so long. You know, I did the same thing with avocados. I would not eat avocados. And then about 14 years ago, and I had two avocado trees in my yard in California, and there were tons of avocados. I just let my dogs eat them. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, so many. And I would go in this special thing and knock them off the tree, this like hook yeah. cage thing. But then a coworker made guac. His wife did and said, you got to try it. And I'm like, oh, it's green. It looks awful. I tried and like, oh, how did I go my life without avocado? And now I absolutely love it. I think mushrooms may be one of those things where I'm like, once I try them, I just, I'm like, how did I go so long without them? Because I love the idea that they can absorb flavor. That means I can change the sauce, the marinade, and have a lot of variety. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Yes, I would say take your favorite stir fry sauce and soak them in that. And it doesn't take long. I mean, 15, 30 minutes, that's it. You, you just soak them in there and they take up that flavor and it provides this nice, meaty, oh, so good. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so far, there have been a few nay on the mushrooms. It is overwhelmingly yes and yay. <laughs> well, for those who have not had them, maybe try a different recipe, maybe try it a different way, maybe try it at a restaurant to see if they cook it a different way. That would be interesting. Mushroom risotto is so one of my favorite things, absolute Ooh. favorite things. So, okay. Oh, see, Joyce is song. giving there me tons of ideas. That's yeah. awesome. And I love her, yeah. her, her, her saying, can't hate them if you don't try them. I tell my kids that all the time, oh. but I don't follow that. We have to lead by example. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, all right. So the other side of the plant-based vitamin A sources, we're looking at vegetables. Now, again. Now, hold on. Let me take being... a guess because I'm thinking vegetables okay. and color. I'm going to think yeah. sweet potato. Yep. Squash. Yep. I can't think of any other orangish or yellow vegetables. What's the first one you told me? The very first one. Sweet Beginning potato? of the episode. Oh, wait. Beginning of the episode. Somebody help him. I don't remember. Avocado? It's green. I'm trying to see if anyone's going to chime in. <laughs> we got to give them a time. A little bit of time. Then, yeah. There's a 20 to 30 second delay before it goes. What do we say before it airs? <laughs> oh, so I remember peppers. That. That's a good one. Pepper. I love peppers. peppers. So does my kids. Yes. They will. I could buy them in the bag and they just eat them. Oh, Linda's got it. <laughs> Carrots. <laughs> yeah, carrots are a good source of vitamin a so 
keep going. I'm, I'm, you, you got, you got four of them down. So That's as far as brush. I can think. And we got a bunch of people reminding us of the carrots. <laughs> I used to so, love okay. carrots, carrots and celery. When I was a kid, yeah. cheese whiz. Mm, I know it's not good now. That's like, I don't know. It's a ton of sodium and a bunch of processed something, but cheese whiz, sure. <laughs> uh, uh, peanut butter, the uh, cream cheese, those right there, mm, carrots and celery. And I was in heaven as a little kid. Well, remember I said orange and dark greens. So oh. we also have kale. We have collards. We have turnip greens. We have the Swiss chard. And then two of probably the most classically known greens, spinach and oh, romaine. Spend it. Oh, romaine. That's awesome. That's the that's the lettuce I always go for because it at least has some nutritional value compared to iceberg lettuce. Exactly. Yes. So those so if you're hearing all these vegetables, you know, there's not a ton of people that are gonna say no to romaine. There's not a ton of people that are gonna say no to carrots. You know, and then we look at the fruit side. There's not a ton of people that are going to say no to the mango. Wait, did we go through the fruit? We went through the fruit. Yeah, yeah, we did fruit yeah. first. Yeah. So basically, if you're seeing all these different types of foods that are good sources of vitamin A, it's pretty apparent that even for the pickiest eaters, we're not going to be running low on vitamin A anytime soon, mm -hmm. especially since it's stored in our liver as a fat soluble vitamin. Now here's a question. What about canned carrots? So I, I don't use canned food. I do use frozen food. I love frozen food because it's, it's good for a long time. I could stock up my big old chest freezer with there's, there's corn, there's carrots, there's green beans, there's peas. I think it's about it. <laughs> there's a lot of that stuff and radishes. So oh, radishes oh, are my, yeah. are, are like apple light to me. When I was little, I loved to eat radishes like an apple. Have you tried roasted radishes? Have we talked about this? No, no. This is new. Life-changing. I swear. Like, roasted radishes are life-changing. Really. I am going to, I have to write that down. I am going to look that I love radishes and so do my kids. And I always add them. I slice them up and add them to my stir fry along with, you know, the broccoli and cauliflower and stuff. Yeah. Um, I will tell you that roasting them completely changes their flavor. So that obviously that crisp texture that you get is going to be gone, but it turns into this nice, soft, um, creamy texture almost kind of like roasted potatoes and uh -huh. the flavor is super mild so for anyone out there that are saying like, if you're saying like oh i don't do radishes because they're too spicy um that flavor is too sharp for me try them roasted oh my gosh i need roasted radishes back okay, in my life i'm right doing now. it over the next three days so next week okay. i'm going to try the mushroom and i'm gonna i'm gonna try to roast i'm gonna look it up how to roast radishes i'm gonna try it I can tell you right now in like three minutes how to do it. Go ahead. Okay. So get the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, right? That's for us Fahrenheit. And then you want to um, wash the radishes, make sure they're nice and clean, uh, chop off the greens. So make sure you can leave them whole or you can cut them in half, whatever you prefer. Toss them in a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil, Ooh. sprinkle salt, sprinkle a pepper. I like rosemary on them. So you could do that if you like. Toss it all together, dump it on a sheet, throw it in the oven, 25 minutes, done. Oh, that sounds awesome. Now, I, I RB5241 just reminded me, I didn't let you answer about canned carrots. Are those a good option? So canning, I mean, I am a fan of any kind of fruit vegetable that you can get into your body. And if canned vegetables are what you have access to, I think that's still a good option. The canning process, I believe, and I need to double check this, um, but I believe it does have some of the vitamin, it has a little bit lower in the vitamin A can, uh, amount, but it's still a source of vitamin A, it's not gone. 
Um, frozen, absolutely, because they're picked, flash frozen, done. That is That doesn't go anywhere. But I will, I'm not gonna bother checking it because my internet is still super questionable and I don't know how long it would take that page to tell me what's going on. Um, but I wanna say the canned uh, carrots are still going to be a source of vitamin A, not anything you need to worry about. Yeah, and Alan had a great recommendation here. Rinse the food off from the can in warm water. Um, you know, that's recommended. All the dialysis center websites recommend that if you are going to can, don't use that water that came with it because it's probably might be high in sodium or other things, but rinse the food off and, you know, can should be good. that are popping up uh no i think we're good people are still saying yum they like the roasted radishes i i love i could i buy those little bags of radishes i don't know they're eight 12 ounces probably that they're you know they're, they're cut at the top so they just got the radishes and i rinse those things and i can sit down watch netflix and eat those like popcorn so i can't wait to try roasted radishes Give me more things with radishes. You know what I think would be such a pretty holiday dish would be a nice bowl of roasted radishes and Brussels sprouts. Because oh, yeah. of that reddish pink and the green, I think that would be really good. And roasted Brussels sprouts, that's a whole other like game changer I to love, me. Oh, ro roasted Brussels sprouts, roasted asparagus, um, and broccoli, we, we, we eat a lot of broccoli also yes. here at our house. Our kids love that stuff. We, we Back in the day, when we'd go out to eat and there'd be like a big old pile of french fries and some broccoli, my kids were all reaching for the broccoli. We were like so proud of them. We're like, yay. That's great. We, we cooked it. We learned how to add spices to add flavor and make it really good. So they love it. Yeah, I had broccoli last night and I was finishing up um, what was I making with my broccoli? Why am I spacing? Oh, I was doing, I was doing a rice cauliflower, um, rice cauliflower stuffing from Trader Joe's. I was trying mm -hmm. that out. And as I was cooking it up, the broccoli was already done and it was roasted. And it was just sitting there literally right next to me. And I was just like eating that as I was cooking my cauliflower. <laughs> so good. And then my husband came home and he's eating the cauliflower or the, the broccoli right off the pan. So it, it's really, really good. Um, Okay, so for vegetables, when in doubt, roast it out. That's our phrase, okay? I love it. It works. I promise you, it works. It makes every vegetable taste amazing, changes the flavors, will change your life. <laughs> now, you know, I did not, I do not eat dinner before these shows. And I'm like, oh, thinking of all these things, like, I can't make them tonight. I don't have the time. But <laughs> I am this weekend or this long weekend that I have, all this stuff just sounds so good. We're going to have our own Thanksgiving dinner stretched out. It's going to be a great, very plant-friendly, long Thanksgiving dinner for the next five days. Yeah, and if you guys are in the Facebook group for Plant Powered Kidneys, you should absolutely share your pictures there. So many people oh, yeah. share their foods, and it's so, yes, roasted turnips, that's another good one. It uh, is so and it, inspiring. <laughs> and look at Joyce, more great advice. Yes. Yes. Nice, Joyce. Very, very good. I am I am missing my air fryer so bad right now. I can't even tell you. I, I really, really am excited to get my stuff back, mostly so I can just air fry everything. <laughs> awesome. Anything else about vitamin A? Because we're coming close to the top of the hour here. Well, I think I'll just kind of wrap it up with some of the bullet points of what we talked about, because I know we were jumping around in our conversation, which is so much fun, always so, so much hey, fun. That means we're having a great time. We're talking <laughs> yeah. about different things to eat, different variety. And for those that are watching that are new, they're hearing all these great things that they may not even have thought that they can have on their kidney-friendly renal diet. It's just gonna make food so much more enjoyable. Because you guys, you should always enjoy your meals. You shouldn't be looking as like, oh, I got to eat that. Ugh. Nah, you can make it good with the different ways you can cook it, different spices, different combinations. It's absolutely amazing. And I 
You know, for those of you who have been here for a while know, back in the day, the only greens I got was if I it came with a side salad or it went on top of my burger. Those were the only greens. Now, it's all plant-powered food for me. I still eat a little animal protein. I might have a little bit of chicken or a, an egg or something like that. Uh, but I would say I am at least 90% plant-based, and that is part of of my recovery and the improvement in my overall health as I've gotten, you know, feeling better, which is what really matters. I think it's so much fun to have these chats every week. And that's why I keep wanting to come back and talk with you. Um, and I will keep doing that. So for the summary, for wrapping up what we talked about for vitamin A specifically tonight, Number one it is a fat soluble vitamin. So eating your, your vitamin A foods with some fat in your diet, which is part of a balanced meal that's gonna help or, or even snack, that's gonna help the vitamin A get absorbed into your body. The second thing, because it's stored in the body, you don't need a supplement. Supplements, especially vitamin A supplements for kidney patients or people with kidney disease is not recommended. It can cause high calcium levels, and uh, it, it's not it's not something that would be encouraged. That's why you don't see it in your renal vitamins. Then thirdly, you can get vitamin A from plants. It doesn't need to come from animal sources. It is a different source. It's beta carotene, but that is turned into vitamin A once it gets into our bodies. So you can absolutely do a plant-based diet and get plenty of vitamin A, no worries there. Now, I have, a fun fact, fun is a very relative term, but it's very interesting. I learned this in my undergrad, going to school for our biochemistry. My professor taught us that if a person eats a polar bear liver, it could kill you. And I'm guessing because it's toxic because of all the something it's storing that there's too much of that isn't good for us. Oh, the vitamin A. Yeah, it has such a high level of vitamin A stored in a polar, but you know, vi <laughs> polar bear liver, I don't think I've ever seen on a menu. So I don't think it's too much of a concern for us. But I thought, wow, that is just so interesting. You know, if anybody did some kind of like food challenge or whatever the case is, don't do the polar bear, bear liver. <laughs> there you go. Again, I've traveled a lot. I've seen some bizarre things or at least seem bizarre to me like ostrich, uh, buffalo, and stuff like that, especially up in Canada. But I have never, ever seen polar bear anything. Yeah. So, you know, fun is a very relative term, like I said. But I, that is just some. that's a fact. That's a fun fact for me. I will never, ever forget because when I learned that, I was just blown away. <laughs> cool. Anything else? Awesome. And I think we've pretty much stayed caught up on everyone's questions. So, um, you know, let me wrap things up on my side. If you haven't subscribed yet over on YouTube, hop on over, click that subscribe button, hit the little bell icon. That way, whenever I schedule these shows, you'll get a notification so you can plan your week on what's coming up. And just to kind of give you guys an idea of some things that are coming up tomorrow night, we have Dr. Butt. Um, we're going to talk about life on dialysis and hopefully some ways to make it a little bit better. I'm working, if you guys may remember Megan, and we did a recipe um, about ooh, maybe a month or a half ago. I'm meeting with her tomorrow morning, her and Flavis. They're over in Italy. So we have a call tomorrow morning to talk about doing more recipe videos. So keep an eye out for those coming up. And... I am about to send my new car in to get it wrapped for Dadvice TV. So once it gets all wrapped, I'll take pictures and I'm going to start promoting Dadvice everywhere I drive. Can't fly anywhere right now. So I'm going to, my car is going to turn in to a billboard to hopefully help people realize that dialysis isn't the only option and that there are things you can do that may be able to improve your health. But most importantly, improve your quality of life while living with kidney disease. So I'd like to thank you, Jen, for coming back again. 
always, always awesome to have you here. And thank you, everyone out there. Hopefully, I'll see all of you tomorrow night with Dr. Butt. If not, have a great rest of your week. And those of you that are celebrating Thanksgiving here in the United States, be safe and be careful. That COVID thing, we, we talked last night. We had Dr. Rowe on. We don't want to be catching COVID. So do like me. Stay home. Have Thanksgiving with the family that lives with you. And just you know, be joyous together. And you know it's okay. FaceTime grandma and grandpa. You know, do it the virtual way. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. And Jen and I will see you guys next Tuesday. And hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow night when Mr. Bud is here. Thank you guys. Bye.